Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm reviewing the Lord of the Rings adventure book game from Ravensburg. The Lord of the Rings is a 1-4 to four player storybook experience. The general idea of the game is you're going to be playing through 8 different chapters over here. Each chapter is a page. After I explain how to play, I'll flip through a few uh, with minor spoiler warnings so you have time to uh, avoid it if you want to. But effectively, you're going to be going through 8 different adventures. All the adventures follow the same general rules, but there are specific rules and differences to them. But in each one, you're playing through a beat of the actual, you know, Fellowship of the Ring and the entire story of Frodo and Gollum and all that stuff and all those things going on here. And and in each one, you're trying to accomplish challenges. You're going to go through a sequence of challenges that you have to accomplish in order to actually complete the mission. There's going to be a lose condition as well that's going to be usually different for every single one of them, although if you ever run out of the uh, the plot deck, then that's consistently a way you'll, you, you'll lose the game. But past that, it's basically a hand management exercise. In the game, let's just play through a few turns to show you how this works. So this is going to be the most minor of spoilers for the first uh, scenario, but really less spoilers and more of a how to play. But I'm going to control two characters here. Let's pretend we're playing with two characters, and I'm going to have a hand of four cards for each. Now I'm going to have these ring cards over here that you can see. Those are not the best, although they are situations. Did I really? Did I literally just draw four rings? Do I bother resetting? Do I just go through this? You know what? Let's show you how this works. It is what it is. I cannot believe I drew four rings there. Uh, but anyways. Let's go ahead and show you how this works. Uh, on your turn, there's a nice little reference card that tells you everything. The first thing you do on your turn is you move a character zero to two spaces or two characters one space each. Now you want to pay attention to the challenges in here. And again, this is still just a teach. This is literally the first adventure, so I'm not really giving anything away here, assuming you plan on playing the game at all. Uh, but over here we have the challenges. Keep it secret, keep it safe. It comes in pints, and we do not stop till nightfall. Those will be uh, fun little quotes from the movies, if you're familiar with them. But keep it secret, keep it safe, and they do not have to be completed in order unless the game tells you to, but I do find that usually moving top to bottom is usually going to naturally work out. Not always, but more often than not, top to bottom usually works, and some situations you have to do it in a certain order. But over here, keep it secret, keep it safe. We have to have Frodo and Gandalf must be on the hearth, and we have to have Samwise must be on the road to the Shire. Now, you're going to be putting down the setup over here the setup over here is always consistent there's some basic setup rules and that tells you what to do over here in this case we have to try to get road to the shire we have to get a frodo over here to the hearth so i'm going to use my ability to move zero not my ability my starting turn i'm going to move a character zero to two spaces so one two we now have gandalf at the hearth and now we can go to the storytelling phase where we can do any number of extra actions playing special cards or the most common one is going to be discarding cards from your hand to move characters so what we're going to do over here is we're going to discard a card that's going to be, you're know, going to discard this card to move Frodo to the hearth. We need to get Samwise to the road to the Shire. But I think, you know what, I think we might wait for right now. We could make it happen, but I'm going to hold off right now so you can see how this goes. You can also trade a card with another player if you want, which I'm going to hold off on doing as well. And that's going to be our current first turn. That's going to be the end of the turn. We're going to go ahead and draw a plot card from the plot deck. So let's move these over here. We're going to draw a plot card. And that's going to be three. We'll reference the current chapter card, which tells us what happens. Move any hobbits to the hiding spot. If it's already occupied, you lose this chapter. So we're going to grab one of these hobbits over here, toss them to the hiding spot. If there's ever two hobbits in the hiding spots, you immediately lose the chapter. That's turn one. And that's it. That's everything that's going on there. Now we're going to go through a few more turns to so get a sequence of play, and then we'll go into the review and all those things, or how each chapter is different. But effectively over here, so we have we have this character now in the hiding spot. We're going to go ahead and take this person's turn. Again, you can move characters uh, zero to two spaces, so we're going to move Samwise one, two over there. And this is where it gets tricky, because this is where we have a choice to make. I could risk certain things. You know what? I'm actually going to move Frodo Samwise one over here, and we'll move him out of the hiding spot to over... You know what, honestly, I'm going to leave Samwise where he is. I'm going to move this guy to, to Bree. Now, the reason I'm heading this way is because in Comes and Pints, all four hobbits must be on the orange spaces in Bree. So I can move the hobbits over here because I'm trying to get to these three orange spaces. That's going to be that turn. And then we're going to go ahead, and turn. We're not going to do anything else. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. At the end of this person's turn, we're supposed to draw two cards in the story deck. So we're going to have two more cards in the story deck. Let's put this in this card. And then at the end of my turn over here, we're going to draw two cards. And you discard down to six if you have too many cards. Gonna go back to this person's turn over here. Wait, no, plot deck first. Let's do this actually in order. Plot deck's gonna be drawn. We have a one, move any hobbit to the hiding spot. We're gonna have other cards. I wanna show you other cards too, because that's actually only three cards have this happening. The other uh, 12 cards are going to be moving the black riders around the board. In that case, though, and that's all, again, non spoiler this is all public information. So, we're going to go over here, and now we can take another turn. We're going to start with this person. We're going to move Frodo and Gandalf over there. We're going to move Sam 2 to that spot. That's going to be 2. Perfect. We can now accomplish this quest by discarding that symbol. We're going to discard that. Each player draws a card from the story deck, so we're going to draw a card from the story deck for each character. 
and then Gandalf, remove Gandalf from the board. That's going to be the story beat over there. And now we're trying to get everyone to the Prancing Pony over here. For, from there, we do want to make sure that no one is in the hiding spot because otherwise bad things can happen. So we will go ahead and discard, you know, these two cards over here. We're going to discard these two to go one, two over here. And different scenarios have different rules about sharing spots and things. Right now, in this case, it's okay to, for Hobbits to share spots. And that's going to be these over here. And we need to move all of these guys here as well. That's going to end the turn. We're going to draw two cards. And we're going to go ahead and draw a card over here. And we have 15, move both Black Riders two spaces. Now, Black Riders are going to be moving clockwise around the board, which means I actually messed up over here. I, I did things poorly. So we're actually going to lose right now because I forgot they're going clockwise instead of counterclockwise because now they're going to move along the smoke trails, land in this spot, both of them will move the hiding spot, and we immediately lose. That was anticlimactic, but that is that is technically how it works. Now, one, one more thing before we do that. Let's pretend we didn't lose. Let's pretend they're over here. Uh, in order to not lose whatever it is, one other thing you have is you have the rings. Now, the problem with discarding the rings is whenever you discard the ring, you're going to advance the corruption marker. And whenever the corruption marker hits certain points, you're going to draw bad cards that have bad things happening. So you want to try avoiding those as much as possible. And if it gets to the end, then you ultimately lose the game. So you want to try to be mindful of how, as far as moving it too fast or too often. But then past that, these can be discarded as a wild at any point. So they have that temptation. And there's also, every chapter is going to have a ability, a one ring ability, where you can also do the ring in order to manipulate the riders who might otherwise be in your way in the game. That's the general idea of the Lord of the Rings, the adventure book. You have an adventure book, you have a set of challenges. The challenges are thematic to what's happening in the actual storyline. For the most part, the turn sequences, you're going to move a character or characters zero to two spaces, one each, zero to two, four, zero to two on one character or one space each on other characters. Uh, from there, you're also going to go ahead and take a bunch of actions that involve trading cards. You can trade one card per turn. You can also go ahead and uh, discard cards to accomplish story beats, and you can discard cards to move characters to additional spaces. You'll then draw a plot card and draw two cards at the end of your turn and that's going to continue the sequence if the plot deck ever runs out and there's only 15 cards then you lose the game or if whatever end game condition happens over here then you lose the game past that we're going to dive into the uh, spoiler part here so a little bit of a warning as i just briefly flipped through uh, some of the other adventures Again, the, the only real spoilers here are which exact uh, encounters are if from the storylines are there. If you've watched The Lord of the Rings at any point, then these things are not like surprises. But with that said, that's been enough of a warning. We'll uh, give you a quick little overview. Just avert thine eyes if you don't want to see what goes on here. But we have more story beats over here. We have, I'm not going to use words. I'll just, we have, you know, the, this encounter here with, again, different story beats and encounters and challenges. We have, you know, the next one over here. We have different things happening. And I'm specifically going to, I'll just stop there. I don't, I really don't want to spoil your a uh, sense of adventure as you go from one story to the next. But in case you just want to see a little bit more, uh, there's going to be eight different encounters. I think it's eight. I'm pretty sure it's eight. Let me just double check. Uh, seven and eight different encounters you're going through uh, throughout the adventure. And that is the Lord of the Rings, the adventure book game. Which means the review starting off with ease of play. Uh, overall, the rule book's incredibly easy to dive into. This is like two pages. That's all it is. It's like, I mean, maybe two pages back to back. I don't know. There's not a lot of pages to go through. Uh, the core sequence is incredibly simple. In fact, you can probably get away with reading the reference card and nothing else. You are probably, I'd have to double check. But I think if you read the reference book card and just the setup on each page, I think that's enough. Like, there's really a very simple game to get a set up and dive through. Uh, yeah, very, very straightforward as far as the game experience goes. As far as playtime, each individual chapter takes you anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes, I'd say. Probably about half an hour per chapter, although you can charge through them pretty quickly, especially if you know what's going on. So again, you could hit that 20-minute mark if you're trying to. And then as far as player count, this is a 1-4 to four player game. I think it's a 1-2 to two player game. I just don't see this really... I don't think this being engaging as a 4-player experience, although, again, you know, to each their own. But I would recommend this at 1-2 to two players. As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, starting off with what I like, which is this is a charming, engaging story within a known universe. If you are a fan of the Lord of the Rings IP, this is an opportunity to go through it with a very simple system. It's a good opportunity as far as being a good gateway game, a good family-friendly game, or just a light uh, storytelling-based afternoon. This is not a heavy experience. Understand that walking in. We'll get into that and what I, what I don't like and all that. But it's a charming game system that is easy to pick up and play, and it's compelling enough that it's easy to play through this entire game in one night. This could be your game night. You have a three-hour game night. You can knock out this entire thing in those three hours if you go straight maybe four hours total you can go through the entire adventure i guess it also depends on how often you win or lose but overall there is a sense of team play and cooperation present you can play this as a solo game uh but overall in terms of if you are playing with other players 
And there was that sense of, okay, great, I'll pass you this card in my turn, you'll pass me that card, and let's go ahead and try to move these characters here, and what if we try to do this or that? There is that sense of, of, of collaboration and teamwork in what is appropriately the Fellowship of the Ring. I enjoy the challenge sequencing, the fact that every single game has a bunch of challenges that you're trying to go through, and you're trying to be mindful of the cards you need and how those challenges will help you, the extra things they'll give you. One thing we didn't talk about is there's a deck of special cards. I will not ruin this for you, but many of the challenge rewards will give you different special cards that are thematic aspects or things from the storyline. And then you will not just get them for this adventure, but they'll be shuffled into your adventure deck where you might draw them in the future because you start off with just very basic cards, rings and icons, no, no text or anything. The, challenge, the special cards will give you additional cards that you can get into your adventure that, again, are thematic. You use that thing from the story that is fun, and I haven't even seen them all because you only see a handful of those. The biggest sense of replayability this game has is from how many of these cards there are. In fact, I wanted to look through. I haven't even looked through. Yep, we haven't seen that one. Have not seen that one. I've seen that one, seen that one, seen that one. So through an adventure over here, it looks like I did not see two of the cards. And there are duplicates here. So I only got a handful of them, but two of them I did not see at all in our adventure going through this. And uh, that's going through the full eight-story arc and all that. Now, the game is simple to go through. It is simple. It is to the point. It does what it needs to do. It is an engaging, simple storytelling game within the universe that you possibly know and love. As far as things I don't like in the game, the biggest thing is at the end of the day, the decision space in this game is fairly light. The first adventure is incredibly light. I feel like I hear buzzing. We're going to move on. The first adventure is incredibly light. Uh, past that, it's like a very thematic. Is there like a dark shadow behind me? Is someone wearing a ring? I don't know. Anyways... The first adventure is incredibly light as far as the actual choices you're making in it. And that's only going to get, it's going to get a little bit more difficult as you go on with a little bit more agency and choice, but it never really accelerates past being a very light story. For better or for worse, it makes the game very accessible, but it means that there's not a ton of replay to it, at least not for me. I think the game is ultimately a game where you go through it. For me, the game is a game where I am engaged enough in liking the IP and the simple and fast moving story that I'm happy to play through the entire eight episode arc or nine episodes because we lost one once but past that i don't feel the need to dive into this again the game is not tight enough in the decision space to give me that sense of of diving into it for mechanical reasons the decision space is present and ultimately it's primarily about moving through the story at least for myself at least based on you know what i got out of the experience so i like the game but it's just very, very light. I'll also say that I think there was more opportunity for scenarios to diverse, to di to uh, differentiate themselves from one another. A lot of the same general concepts are present story to story. There are some things that are a little bit interesting, but I think across the eight episodes, I felt that I felt that there could have been more interesting ways to engage with the same system while also not being overwhelmingly different or overwhelming uh, or too much for players to pick up. And so I think there's a little bit too much overlap on the core mechanics that does mean that by the time you get to the end of the eighth episode, at least for myself, I found it was not just light in decisions, but also felt a little samey in the main things you were doing time and time again. As far as I can see, others not liking, first of all, I mentioned already, this really feels like a one to two player game at most. If you play this at four players and you have a bad experience, I have not played it at four players, just for the record, but like, I, I don't think this game would operate as well at higher player counts, just the nature of how much decision space there already is, and just diversifying even a small amount of decisions across even more people, I just don't, I don't see that really working out well. Uh, it could be a fun time to just go through the experience as a group of friends if you don't really care about the game at all, and you're here purely for the story, but I just don't see it working at higher player counts. And then again, replayability. For me, I'm fine with it. This is a game I'm happy to have gone through and then be done with. But if you're looking for a replayable experience, I don't think this has that much decision making. Again, it does depend on who you are. It depends on what your gaming experience is like. You may find this to be the perfect level of engagement for what you're looking for. I would say that there's a decent chance if you watch a lot of videos on my channel and you resonate a lot with uh, where I am in gaming, I think this is a lighter experience that may not hold your attention past an initial playthrough. As far as final thoughts on the Lord of the Rings The Adventure Book game, I had fun with this story. I did. I went through the entire eight episode arc, again, nine because I lost one, but I went through that entire thing. I did it across two days. You could do it in one day, but I did it across two days. It's fast. It's simple. It's engaging. It gives you enough of a reason to just continue playing because of how simple it is. And it's fun to turn the page and be up to that scene from the movie and then to go through it with the characters and to unlock these miniatures and utilize them and have the slight puzzles in play. And there are times when you have to try to puzzle out the best sequence of playing out cards. And overall, I think it's a good implementation of an IP in an accessible, more story than mechanically based game. At the same time, it is very light. Uh, for me, this is a 3.5 out of 5 with a caveat. 
to me, a 3.5 is a game that I kind of enjoy and want to keep playing to a degree, but doesn't rank that highly, and that's what this was as I was going through it. Now that I'm done with it, I don't feel the need to ever play this again, so take that into account. It's a 3.5 as far as while I'm going through it, while I'm going through it, but I do have that sense of, great, I'm done, it's over, and I don't see myself ever really picking this up again. I don't feel the need to. And theoretically, down the road with kids or reason or whatever, I don't know, but like, at the same time, there's always games coming out, so I don't see myself going through this adventure again. But I did enjoy it while it was going, primarily because of the IP and it pulling me in and just how easy and simple it was. Very mechanically light, but also engaging enough to play through uh, nine, st nine games across two days. Overall, a 3.5 out of 5, solid game, and that is the Lord of the Rings adventure book game from Ravensburger. If you're looking for other game recommendations, another game that had a very similar sense of uh, being a lighter game, but just pulled me in from the sense of story and adventure, uh, the Robin Book Ro Adventure. Adventures of Robin Hood from Cosmos is a very enjoyable experience that's also on the lighter side, but also very engaging as far as pulling you in in terms of what's happening. And if you're looking for something with a little bit more meat on its bones as far as the actual decisions based on mechanics, Stuff Fables will be another adventure book game from Plaid Hat Games that gives you that sense of, of, of a storybook that will be turning through it, but also a greater sense of story and decision as far as how you engage with that adventure. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.